the success of Chandrayaan 3, an incredibly proud moment for all Indians. And it was just wonderful to see how entire India came together to celebrate. But what you should also know is that software engineering has played a huge role in this achievement. And that is what we are going to be discussing today. We will discuss how the code that is written in mission critical systems like Chandrayaan 3 is different from the code that we write in our usual systems. And we'll also discuss a few algorithms that are very essential in systems like Chandrayaan 3. So obviously today's video is going to be extremely interesting. So stay tuned and if you haven't subscribed yet please do and please do like it it will mean a lot let's get started before getting into the details of software engineering in a system like chandrayaan 3 i feel it is very important to understand what went wrong in chandrayaan 2 four years ago and let's understand how we have done things differently in chandrayaan 3 because of which almost everyone was very confident that chandrayaan 3 is going to be successful so let's understand that what happened in the last few seconds of chandrayaan 2 because of which it failed so when chandrayaan 2 was landing on the moon obviously it was landing in a curve it doesn't land like this obviously vertically right it is going to land in a curve now because it is landing in a curve there is going to be some horizontal velocity and there is going to be some vertical velocity now both of these should be controlled to have a soft landing so basically we want to land safely on the moon there should be a soft landing but in vertical velocity what came into picture was the gravity now because of the gravity the vertical velocity increased a lot more than what was expected and because of which we ended up having a crash landing instead of a soft landing. Now let's understand why we weren't able to control the velocity at which Chandrayaan 2 was landing. Remember that we were in final few seconds of the landing and the time left was very less. Now to auto adjust the speed, the system had to rotate. And what happened was, now there is a scientific term that you should know, which is attitude. Now, attitude essentially means the orientation of the system. Now, first thing that happened was that this attitude was hard-coded. So, you couldn't change the orientation of the system. How will the rotating system help you in adjusting velocity? Because the thrust will change in different direction and we can control the velocity. If there was more time, we could have landed properly. But because the time left was less and the rotation that was possible was actually very less because of which Chandrayaan 2 failed. So obviously these things were improved in Chandrayaan 3. Not only the possible orientation value was increased, but also the attitude, the orientation could now be self-adjusted based on a few factors. There were obviously many more factors because of which we were sure that Chandrayaan 3 is going to be successful. The hardware was updated, the engine was updated, the legs were much more stronger for the landing. It could take a lot of speed while landing and many other things also improved. But there was one more major factor. To understand this, let's understand the components of Chandrayaan 2 first. So in Chandrayaan 2, there were three main components. One was orbiter, lander and rover. Let's understand what are the functions of these three components. So orbiter, as the name suggests, is supposed to orbit around the moon. And it was a huge, huge success for Chandrayaan 2 because of which we got a lot of information. It has a lot of scientific instruments and it is still revolving around the moon. So because of which we did not have to to add an orbiter in Chandrayaan 3 and because of that the cost was reduced a lot and the risk was also reduced a lot because the complex part which is the orbiter was now removed and hence the risky part of the mission was removed. So in Chandrayaan 2 there was no orbiter, there was just lander and rover, there was a propulsion system separately but still because we did not require any orbiter the cost reduced, the risk reduced. Now we understood that orbiter obviously orbits around the moon. The lander on the other hand takes a different trajectory in and is supposed to land softly on the moon. And the rover is present inside the lander. So there is a lander and rover is the one that studies the composition, does all the research, take pictures of the surface and does all of that information. Now that you have some context about Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3, I guess you can understand that how mission critical the system is. So it has to be extremely reliable. It has to be extremely efficient in terms of memory, in terms in terms of processing power, it has to be very portable, it should work on different platforms and it has to be very maintainable also. Yes, maintainable as well because it should be able to easy to update and fix from Earth itself if needed. So let's understand it how the code that is written in these systems is very different from the code that we write usually and let's understand the points one by one. Before we go ahead, I would just like to say that if you're interested in software engineering concepts like these, then I've started my own courses. So the last course was a huge success. It was a live high level system design course. The next one coming up is live five week low level system design course and it is starting on 19th September. Please do join if interested because obviously once the date passes you will not be able to attend it live. The week wise curriculum is mentioned on the site 
All the details are mentioned over there, kirtipurswanicourses.com. There are separate FAQ sections for LLD, HLD. All the details are mentioned over there. Do check it out. During the course, I will be discussing the code in C++ and in Java. But if you know any object-oriented programming language, you should be able to follow. So just have trust in me. If interested, you can check out the testimonials. If you have any questions, let me know. But if you are not interested in courses, that is also fine because free content is going to be available. But if you decide to take up courses, then the process is going to be much uh, structured for you. You're going to be part of the community. It is going to be easier, faster, and that's it. Memory management is a critical task in space systems. Like usually when we write code like in C++, we can do just new pointer or new integer. We cannot afford any memory leaks in space system, right? Plus the memory is very, very limited. So whatever is available to us is very, very limited. So we try to allocate as much memory as possible on stack instead of doing new. We try Try to allocate as much memory as possible on the stack itself and we try to manage it properly and also contiguous memory is allocated to make the system much faster but now it is very hard to find contiguous free memory right so because of that pagination and all of that also comes into picture so memory management can be very very complex in space systems since we were earlier talking about efficiency i guess you can imagine how important it is to handle data types over here properly like in our usual systems if we write integer instead of float it is not not a very big deal but over there if i have to store a particular data value till this these many decimals i have to make sure that the value is that precise because a small change in a decimal value can actually lead to a huge disaster and entire mission fail altogether no matter how well we have designed our software there can be exceptions and we have to do exception handling properly you can just imagine a normal try catch itself like for example suppose we are handling a propulsion system so if our propulsion system fails there there has to be a backup. Now, worst case, if this doesn't happen, this doesn't happen, in our say try catch finally wala part probably we will have a safe mode that okay if these conditions have failed then this is the safe mode that we should switch to and obviously because of that we should also have failover mechanisms for failover mechanisms again many concepts are used like for example virtual machines are used so if your one process crashes you are still going to have your virtual machine running and there's also checkpointing so basically you have snapshots of your system so you know where to pick up from and obviously there should be backup of the hardware systems also so if one or two sensors fail we should have backup sensors as well because we cannot afford that our sensors stop working over there correct we obviously have very limited power also so power consumption is something that we have to take care of now let me give an example suppose for some kilometers or suppose we are in a particular area and we know that we don't need our entire system to work so what can happen is that a few of our devices or components can actually go into a sleep mode and only small part of our system is going to be running which is going to be responsible for waking up the system whenever required but when our entire system is not needed we can be smart and we can save power also for better power consumption there are solar panels which convert the sunlight to electricity so that is also there another point that i am sure you must be already thinking of is that how important simulation is going to be in such systems we need to be able to simulate all the possible harsh scenarios to be able to test our system thoroughly so that there are no surprises obviously we are spending hundreds of crores and there's entire world watching over us so we cannot afford to make any errors and we have to be as ready as possible so in these systems simulation is as important as it can ever be it is extremely extremely important for systems like these the process of patching software updates for chandrayaan is called ground to space data transfer or g2s data transfer as you can imagine it will require its own planning testing monitoring because we have to measure the distance between the ground station and the spacecraft we have to see the amount of data that needs to be transferred the strength of the signal and also the power requirements of the system because we have limited resources after all now that we have understood how complex the system is let's understand the very important algorithms for a system like chandrayaan 3 collision avoidance algorithm as the name suggests so it is used for detecting and avoiding obstacles in the lander's path so a lander has many sensors and based on this information received from the sensors the algorithm is going to command the thrusters to avoid the collision 
trajectory planning algorithm again as the name suggests we have to plan the trajectory based on lander's mass velocity the gravitational field of the moon whatever trajectory is going to work best for us for soft landing while discussing chandrayaan 2 we discussed lander's attitude or orientation now we need to control this based on a lot of factors as we had discussed and we need to command our thrusters to be able to control the attitude so control algorithm is used for that whatever images we have from lander or rover we need to send it to the ground right so we need to obviously probably divide it into parts and obviously compress it and need to send it so for that we need an image processing algorithm also now i have mentioned a few algorithms i am obviously sure as you might have also understood there are going to be a lot more algorithms the system is going to be a lot more complex but i hope this gives you a bit idea about how complex the system can be and the extremely important role that software engineering plays in a system like chandrayaan 3 i would like to take a moment to thank the entire isro team entire india is really really proud of you thank you so much for making this successful and kudos to you for pulling off such a complex system we are so proud of you but again i am not a space scientist this whatever i covered in this video is based on whatever research i was able to do if i have made any mistakes please do let me know in the comments or whatever feedback you have please do let me know i would love to improve but i hope you found the video interesting and i would love to keep creating more such videos so please do let me know your feedback please do share it with your friends please do like please do subscribe it will really really mean a lot to me and it will really motivate me thank you see you next time